Did I do it right? Hi, welcome to Dream Seed VR. I'm your host, Sarah Finn, and today I, I thought it was as apt a time as any to go full tinfoil hat. So welcome. Today, uh, I feel like it's appropriate for us to talk about brain-computer interfaces. So BCIs, for short, is a kind of technology that's been rapidly developing over the past number of years that allow the human nervous system and the brain to communicate data to a computer interface. Now most people are familiar with this in regards to Elon Musk's Neuralink, but there are lots of other ways that the nervous system can interact with a computer interface that don't require a hard line in. We live at the beginning of a new era in humanity. And for the most part, that threshold has gone by most of us without any kind of real consideration for how that's going to affect human history from here on out. We just think of it in terms of convenience regarding our smartphones and the internet so we can look things up or order stuff online. But the direction that things are going to take in the next five to ten years are going to have a fundamental impact on not only uh, culture but human experience and the nature of privacy. So the focus of this episode is definitely with the regard for privacy in mind. The reason why I feel like it's important to bring this up now regarding the nature of the human nervous system and privacy is because in the next few years, as these technologies develop, we might not get the chance to properly evaluate the things that we are giving up for convenience, as well as express our opinions and perspectives and resistance towards tech oligarchy making the invasion of neurological privacy normalized. So some of the developments that have sort of gone unnoticed, meanwhile Elon Musk and his little rhesus monkey are playing Pong on a computer with its brain. Um, back in March of 2016, there was an article released by Scientific American detailing the U.S. government launching a $100 million program uh, dubbed the Apollo Project of the Brain. Now this is the Machine Intelligence from Cortical Networks program, and it's a part of the larger Intelligence Advanced Research Projects activity, which is uh, short, it's called IARPA, I-A-R-P-A, and it's modeled after DARPA, which is a Defense Department robotics research program. That also includes some of the Boston Dynamics dogs that I covered in the robotics episode previously. Now this intelligence project aims to reverse engineer the brain to find algorithms that allow computers to think more like humans. And I really want to take this statement and inverse it for you because oftentimes things are in the media portrayed with a sort of gloss veneer to make the public feel like there's disclosure but more comfortable with what's actually going on. And if you think about this, um, the intelligence project aims to reverse engineer the brain to find algorithms that allow computers to think more like humans really means that what they're doing is trying to find algorithms to read minds and that they're trying to find the basic way that a brain encodes information so it can mimic that and in turn be able to read the data that brains use as their native communication system in a neural net. Also in April of 2019, so just two years ago, in The New Scientist they covered a program at UCSF in which a researcher named Edward Chang was working with his team to find a way to interpret the signals that go from the brain to the lips, the jaw, and the larynx. And in this way, they trained an algorithm to reproduce speech from the signals captured there. And they reported that it was really robust after just 25 minutes of training with the AI. Patterns for individuals vary, but someday enough data might enable the AI to learn over time the general rules and patterns 
in such a way that this can be applied to anybody in real time. Also, there's another article from Smithsonian Magazine entitled, This Device Can Hear You Talking to Yourself. Now, this is a very similar technology. Um, this article is also from 2019 in August. So, this guy, Arnav Kapoor, he created a device called Alter Ego that has sensors that detect minuscule neuromuscular signals sent by the brain to the throat, the jaw, the larynx, just like the other device. But what's interesting is that they were able to find that you don't even have to be speaking for these devices to sense the signals that are going to those parts of your anatomy. So hypothetically, you could just be thinking to yourself. So these technologies exist. And in and of themselves, they're going to be branded and portrayed in the media as convenient, helpful, and groundbreaking when it comes to aiding people with disabilities or limitations, just like every other technology has been branded that way over the, the past 50 years. Whether it's prosthetics or Neuralink or exoskeleton technology, whatever it is. Now, it's important to remember that technology is always neutral. Even a gun can be used to go out and hunt and provide sustenance for your family, or it can be used to defend yourself, or it can be used to nefarious ends. Just like the power of the atom can be used to power a nuclear power plant and provide light and electricity and energy for whole communities and countries, it can also be used to create bombs and, and destroy civilization. So it's important to remember that technology itself is neutral, but its application never is. The application of technology always has an implicit intention involved. So the reason why I bring this up is because we are reaching a place historically where the sovereignty of the human mind is about to be threatened by this new technology. Now, what if you could use a laser beam or some other kind of device to measure those signals from a throat and larynx from far away? What if you could just like send a beam at someone and do that instead of having electrodes on their, their throat and their chin and their jaw, as in the alter ego device, right? We are encroaching a place that rapidly looks like the infrastructure needed to be able to have thought police. And I don't care if it makes me sound crazy to talk about this, it's important. We need to maintain the sovereignty of our nervous systems, our consciousness, and the privacy of our stream of thought. People have already noticed that with sentiment analysis and predictive algorithms that you can anticipate the, the search terms a person will put into the various engines based on their previous searches as well as other data points that are being mined from their social media. That these databases full of metadata from our social media have been having algorithms and machine learning applied to them to create virtual versions of us that can anticipate in advance where our connectome is going in the near future. For those of you who don't know, a connectome is a word that this like brain scientist came up with to describe the way your neurons are interconnected relating to your memories and your thoughts and just different aspects of who you are as a person. And um, it's really interesting to think that 
with all of the information that we've been dumping into social media over the years that these people will soon have enough to create sort of like doppelganger golems of us all so they can better advertise to us and better control us and better anticipate how to socially engineer us on uh, cultural and political lines. So this is fast approaching Brave New World and 1984. People have been making those metaphors for a long time and now we're to the place where you know you can monitor people for thought crime. You can hear their thoughts in their head. Now it's going to be a long time before those things get implemented or before people are using devices that have that kind of interface capability. But it's really important to think about before it comes because as we've mentioned before on the show, technology is always a few steps ahead of legal precedent. So we're not going to be able to be in a position to turn around and tell the tech oligarchs like, okay, you've gone a step too far now. Let's rein it back a bit and make sure that we have protections and regulations that address the kinds of abuses that will come out of this new set of, of privacies that people are trying to maintain. So I feel like that's the gist of what I wanted to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and provide links to the different articles that I mentioned here in the episode. And I definitely want to continue this line of uh, postulation and investigation. I just really wanted to give you a quick primer on some of the information that I had come across. And I also wanted to let you know that I still will be covering um, philosophy and stuff related to science fiction. And I'm still going to be giving cultural analysis on, you know, my favorite sci-fi stuff, but as we move into the hard future, I feel like it's really important for me to be honest with the things that I think about and the things I worry about and do what I can to empower you guys to understand what's really going on. And I'm not going to lie, I'm scared. The only way I know how to cope with how freaky this is is to tell you guys about it and to like really show you in earnest how real these things are. Like, this is a joke. This is a joke, okay? But the reason why this is a joke is because it's supposed to be a Faraday cage, okay? If you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a, it's a mesh that blocks radio waves and other signals, right? It's the same thing that's inside your microwave that prevents the microwave radiation from coming outside when you make your burrito. So... It's a joke, but it's not. And I want to be like quippy and and cheeky, but that's a window dressing. So if you think that this is important, just stick with me. I'll make sure that we have fun on this channel. But what's more important to me is that we all understand what's coming at us at breakneck speed. That's much more important to me than talking about my favorite movies and games. Thank you guys for letting me get serious. Thanks for watching this episode. You can follow me on Instagram, dreamseed underscore VR. You can follow me on Patreon and support the channel. That is patreon.com slash seraphin. And you can also find the website, which is dreamseedvr.com. As always, I'm so grateful for your attention span and your eyeballs, and I'll catch you on the other side. Bye for now. Who likes bloopers? I like bloopers. So, if you hadn't noticed, like, this is a fabulous prop. This is muy fashion, but for those of you who want to go for the real world protection. This is a neat thing. This is a real tinfoil hat. This is a hood by a brand called Radius Smart. It actually has silver fabric lining the inside. So this actually gives you additional uh, protection from 
electromagnetic frequencies. So that would include like 5G and Wi-Fi. So for those people who are sort of sensitive to that kind of a thing, this might be a cool option. And um, I just felt like sharing it with you. It's not an endorsement. It's not a plug. It's just me sharing something um, that was relevant to the topic at hand that I thought people who ha might have genuine concern might benefit from. So you can find these on Amazon. Um, forgive me for feeding the Bezos machine, but um, it's also just like cute, you know? It's got a cool, cool like fashion vibe, little cowl, right? Like that's not, that's not embarrassing to wear. Unlike this, unless you're me and you think it's cool. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks for checking out the blooper on a lighter note at the end. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.